All right, bang, bang. Today is Thursday. It is October 7th. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. Two guests today because we're doing a free swim. Dante, Chief, on the couch. We're doing another Dog Walk studio. I don't know why we haven't done it here before, but we're here. I love yeah, it. that was an oversight on our part. Yeah. You, you're, enjoy, you're enjoying yourself on the couch? It's great in here, man. It's comfy. The couch is comfortable. Your setup is remarkable. It's good. Everything's good. Kind of intimidated by you behind that. That's the goal. That's what I said, too, because he, like, intentionally got us a couch that's lower, <laughs> so he's like, I'm above you guys. That's the goal. Communist regime. Yep. He is. Um, he's a dealer. Cult of personality. Yep. How's everybody doing? I'm good. I can't find this Forbes article, guys. Should we talk about that? Yeah, we could if you want. Yeah, so I a walk- very, I retweeted it, if you want to just want to look at my I Twitter. walked in today, and... I got all scared because these guys are saying there's a Forbes hit piece out and <laughs> on Eddie. Eddie gets destroyed. I was like, oh, no. What did they find out about a lot Eddie? A lot of skeletons in that closet. <laughs> yep. But come to find out, it's a positive article, which it should be because Eddie's the man. But the I can't quote, find it anywhere. The quote, and I actually agree with the quote. And I don't like to give out compliments. But it said, Eddie has off the charts emotional intelligence. <laughs> that is a compliment and a half. I would agree. My God, that's one of the best things you could say about somebody. What exactly? Would you say that about him? What is emotional intelligence? It means like you can read people, read like. Um, you're very relatable. Relatable. You're it, like you can connect with people, can talk to all sorts of different types of people. And uh, yeah, I would agree with Dante. That is one of the one of the best compliments a person can get. So mm, wow. especially today, because I think that's a severely lacking quality. Yeah. Yeah. No. Would you rather have emotional intelligence or just regular intelligence? <laughs> Would you rather have off the charts? Well, you know I don't have regular intelligence. So. See, this is the emotional intelligence angle that he's playing right now. <laughs> That's a, that is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact. Oh, here comes emotional intelligence, relatable Ed. You just know self that's a fact. People listen to me on this show every Tuesday sound like a dumbass. See, I don't I don't think that that's true actually because like you can't know everything about about everything, but you can understand things sure and where if you that, try to explain things to other people that are rockheads it's tough sure but yeah go check out the forbes article it's titled athletes entertainers and the fight for relevance yeah shout out to my friend nick who wrote the article um yeah it's i never really been in an article so it was it was nice i guess you know, yeah i feel i, I know you know i always feel i don't really like that mm-hmm. kind of spotlight but nice to see i guess right i'm sure your mom loved it I'm sure I, I'm sure she doesn't even know. She should. <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't even know. I'm sure she would love it. My um, mom would love it. You know what? I'm going to send it to my mom. Oh, my mom go. will love it. She, she's appreciative. I know that. Uh, but yeah, go check it out. This is great. Are you reading it now? Yeah, this is great, dude. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this afterwards. Cool. Um, but anyways, we did watch a doc. We could delve into. We could delve into other shit as well. Um, we watched the Britney Spears doc. Yeah. Which I watched both of them. Did you guys watch both of them? I just, just did watched? Netflix. I only did the Netflix one. Oh. Hulu was better? It was not better, but if you watch the Netflix one, this was kind of like a part two, and they acknowledged the Netflix one. Like the oh, characters while it was it. going. Because oh, wow. that was going to be one of my questions, because and I, I'll admit that I just have not followed or cared about this story, this whole Britney Spears conservative conservatorship uh, saga with her dad and the whole thing. And I know it's been like a major, major story for I, I over think a that's, year. I think that that's good, though, because you're like a baseline. So what did, yeah. So knowing that or having that happen, what did you think? Well, I, going I should, into this. Kind of blind. I I should say right off the bat, I didn't even really fully understand what a conservatorship was. So, like learning about that, like through the California state law, it is shocking that this even exists. It is. You know, hold on, hold on. Before we get into the real heavy shit, let's get into the white shit. About how was that? (laughs) Is it Miller Lite? Yes, it is. (laughs) How about that? That's a nice ad. Uh, The light stuff, the Miller Lite stuff. Mm-hmm. You guys know what's up. It's Thursday. It's kind of the weekend at this point. I mean, the Sox are playing today. If you're a Sox fan, yep. you should be enjoying some ice cold Miller Lights watching the playoff game because, uh, you know, we don't really count last year, right? You, you've, you've no, that doesn't count. A, for yep. a playoff appearance. So, fans, the yeah. whole thing. Guys, and it's going to be great. Sunday, 81, Sox, playoff game, Bears game. Yeah. 
That's going to be be nuts. Might be the Sunday of the fall. Yeah. 81. I know you don't like that. But <laughs> I'll be inside at 68. It's going to be the perfect Miller Lite. See, yeah. I might, day. I might, might have a, you know, might Eddie, go off for a little bit. Ed, Ed, all right. That was like another shocking comment. <laughs> Eddie, we we're like trying to you know, like plan ahead next week. And he's like, hey, like, do you want to like do next week's episode tomorrow? Meaning we recorded on Thursday. And, and I'm like, yeah, like we can do this. He's like, yeah, because, you know, I might want to go out on Sunday. And like the whole, like it was like the record screech, like the, like the music stopped. Eddie and go out and it's like he wants to go out and have a Sunday. I don't. That's not the Eddie I know. He's picking one of the best. He, that's what I'm saying. It's a big fucking Sunday. So what, he, what does going out mean to you though? Oh, Miller I, Lights on a patio. I mean, if you if I'm having, I mean Sundays especially. That's that's a different ball game because I don't I don't go out on Sundays. Yeah. I, so, I, mean, I mean, like, I kind of feel like you go out and like. In my brain, I could be way off on this, but you'll be like, you'll take your roommates and you go with your guys that you always sit around and drink with and go to like a bar at the corner. Correct, correct. Okay, is that, that's right, yes. So are you doing an elevated no, yeah, version of like, that? No, probably not. Okay. But that's, that's <laughs> but, very, count, but count it. Correct. Yeah, okay. I'm not going, no, I'm not I'm not getting a bottle at uh, Bottle Blonde. Tau. R.I.P. Bottle Blonde's close. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! They gone. Nothing's in there though, right? I thought I drove past mm, the other day. Nope. I still saw the liquor sign. license gone. Well, weren't they serving underage children? I allegedly. I, I don't know what was going on there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they pulled the license. So now possibly it's, it's well, going to be a retail thing. Regardless, whatever you do this Sunday, mm-hmm. tonight, Friday, Saturday, any day, do responsibly and enjoy a Miller Lite because it is a great tasting beer with only 96 calories. Go to MillerLite.com forward slash red line to find the delivery options near you or you can pick up some miller light and pretty much anywhere that they sell beer it's miller time celebrate responsibly miller brewing company milwaukee wisconsin 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces all right so you were shocked that this exists the conservatorship yeah because it sounds like like it's almost poetic in a way like her song i'm a slave for you she sounds like a slave like (laughs) Why are you laughing at that? She's working. Because I totally agree with that she sounds like a slave, but the way you worked in one of her, her best songs, songs, that was well done. That was when that song <laughs> that came. That was well done. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, like that's really, that's what it sounds like. We're indentured servitude, but you know, there is no, I'm an indentured servant for you song. So <laughs> it's, it's the fact that she was making through the vegas thing and her like european tour 200 million 200 million dollars and then they said like legally the ten dollars that she the ten dollar bill that she could have in her purse or pocket she doesn't have the right to spend that how she sees fit she's getting of that 200 million dollars that she's grossing uh she gets an eight thousand dollar a month allowance it's she it, it it just seems like it's not something that should exist in America. And then it's like the whole time I'm like, holy fuck. So it's like, hey, like I'm an adult American who is f- clearly mentally fit enough to work and tour and act and do all these different things and do her own choreography and write music and all this shit. But then they're like, no, she has fu- like legally she has dementia. Like they got all. Well, these- that's what I was going to say. It does make sense if you actually have dementia. Yeah. But that's about but it. But she's like the how old was she when this started? Like 28, yeah. 30? Like yeah. Yeah. she was she was a functioning human adult who just got totally like taken advantage of and it lasted for 13 years. Like it to me it's just I was stunned, man. Shocking. I did not know it was this serious. And it's like and then like it seems like once you're in and like and they go through the whole story of like she's going through a divorce she was you know if you're under the the spotlight of the cameras and all this shit from the time you're 16 and you marry this guy and you have these children you have this kind of like emotional baggage and you're just beaten down i could see a scenario where you're like oh, i just i just can't deal with this right now i just want to focus on you know, being a mother and getting this settled and not, you know, not working. And then you kind of sign things over or things get signed or people convince you to agree to this. And then you're trapped forever because you're not allowed to pick your own lawyer. You're not allowed to. That's to, that's what the part that really fucked me up mm-hmm. was or that was really fucked up to me is that 
not only were all her rights pretty much stripped from her, but she had zero recourse. Right. Her attorney got kicked out of the fucking courtroom. Yeah. And they were like, he's gone, but this guy can stay. Mm -hmm. And the attorney said he was like, I don't even know what that guy argued after I left to this day. He has to go. I don't know if he stood up for her or if he just caved in. And then, you know, throughout the course of this, the Netflix one we're talking about, they uncover the paper trail. And these fucking attorneys made $3 million. Right. Like, so no shit. Like he wants to stay employed as like the co-signer of this conservatorship because. Because they're kicking the can down the road every year. Legal fees for this. Legal fees right. for that. They have to, you know, subpoena this guy. They got to get expert testimony from this doctor. I mean, yeah. every, it was it was a racket. Everybody was in on it. Yep. Pretty and, much. And like. I, I guess it's just like I, I'm a naive person who had was blessed to go up grow up with parents who care about them. But I would hear about these things and like all oh, her father's involved. And I always remember thinking like, well, her dad, it's her dad. Like her dad cares about her. Right. And like that's like, and you know, before I saw the documentary and, and like I said, admittedly, like didn't really know anything, but I would hear like little nuggets. Right. And it's like, how bad can it be? Like it's her father. Really fucking bad is what it turns out, because you know, like he th th that was a thing that I, d I didn't really fully understand or appreciate about her life prior was that her dad had like when she was on the comeuppance and like really being like raised and then like doing all the, like the Disney um, what was the Disney show she was on uh, Mickey Mouse Club, Mickey Mouse Club and like becoming a star. Her dad like wasn't involved. Her dad was like not around. They have other people who are like her, you know, assistant and manager or secretary like this. This one woman was like, I don't want to talk about him. Like he wasn't really involved and I don't like, it's not worth it to me to like battle with like these people and their lawyers and all this. So like, I can't really talk about him, but he was not involved in the beginning. So it's like, he didn't give a fuck about being her dad until there was financial gains to be had on his own behalf. Yeah. So it wasn't like he was rescuing her and protecting her. It was like, no, like he he liked the control and he liked oh, the money. Oh, exploited the fuck out. Yeah, it was really really sad to to S see. And I mean, it happened since she was a kid. It wasn't necessarily the right. dad. He, I mean, he you could argue he was complicit or not. But this is a person, and I feel like you see this over and over and over again with these child stars that never have any sense of normalcy, no normal life yeah. whatsoever, and then they have these breakdowns and these public meltdowns, and everybody's kind of just like. Oh, they're fucking crazy, you yeah. know, and like the late night talk show hosts, er, you know, CNN, they're front page news everywhere. And everybody's kind of like, yeah, loving the, the drama, the downfall yeah. of these people. And well, even like something they showed a clip from the old the old show, The View, which I actually think is still on. But Rosie O'Donnell used to be like the main yeah. panel member. And they were like. Britney's divorcing K Fed, like <laughs> they and were cheering, she's like cheering and like literally shot off the confetti. crowd. Goes, the crowd goes crazy. <laughs> and it, and like, it's like, wow. well, wait a second. Like, they no matter what, together. two kids, like a divorce is like a tragic thing where it's going to be a ton of emotional baggage. And it's one of those things where it's like, not to compare like what we do to Britney Spears, but like, I don't like you know, reading things online necessarily about me that I don't think are true, like different comment section things or, or yeah. whatever. And it's like that, fuck, you know, it, like every, like it goes in cycles where it doesn't bother me at all. And then every once in a while, like if I'm in a mood or I'm tired, I read it, like it actually gets under my skin a little bit. I can't imagine. And it's just like my opinion about something. To I can't magnitude. imagine being Britney Spears and you flip on the TV and, and they're throwing a party about something that is like so emotionally destructive. And then you can't even be a regular person like because let's say you like disguise yourself up and you want to just have like a normal day and go to the grocery store. No what, chance. What do you see at the Bro. checkout line? Bro. It's all the, like your face plastered everywhere what? talking about your personal life. Okay, like, not sucks. just the checkout line stuff. What about every time she left her house, the swarm yeah. of paparazzi? Yeah. That was insane. Would 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 that not drive you nuts? It's Ed? wild that we've got to the point where that's just like normal now. But when you were watching that, oh, dude, you can't even open your door. Yeah, they, you can't even open your car door dude, without someone drive. shoving a hand. They in couldn't it. drive like yeah. they're in front of the car. Yeah. And how about the guy said, back in those days, you could get two to three hundred thousand dollars for a picture Crazy. of her doing something, like 
you know, that would send yeah. shockwaves. Because the thing is, too, like about about the father, if he was involved at the beginning, I could at least be like, hey, maybe he had. He has a little credibility. Yeah, yeah. And right. he had the right, He, you know, his heart was in the right place at the beginning. And then maybe he did get, you know, money hungry. And like, that's what he started going after. But he was never involved. So it's like, yeah, right. that's out the door. Yep. The craziest moment to me, which was like, holy fuck, this is, might be a hostage, was when the Rolling Stone interviewer met her at the hotel bathroom. Yeah. Holy fuck. And that she was, was shook nuts. too. Like she started, she got emotional retelling yep. that story. Yeah, dude. So you could tell. I mean, they, imagine that. Imagine going into a stall and someone comes up there and you slide under the fucking. Yeah. But, but then, how about after that, where the attorney recounted his statement basically and, and pulled a one eighty and was like, "Uh, I basically changed my mind. She's in good hands. They don't need my help." Well, and then they find out that he was getting money down yeah. the road. The, the, uh, sorry, but the other, on the same line, the geriatric psychiatrist. Dude, what a fucking scumbag that guy was. So that guy, he he walks in and they ask him like a pretty innocuous question. Like so they put him in such a mousetrap. Oh, like he, he <laughs> and he like twisted himself up where it was like, hey, like prior to meeting Britney Spears, were you aware of her? And were you a fan of her music? He goes, prior to meeting her, uh, you know, I, I didn't really like music of that ilk. And he's like, wait, wait, I <laughs> never I never confirmed that I actually met her. Like, they, like, he just took the bait and then, like, spat it out and then realized he was like, oh, I fucked myself. It was great. And then they had, like, court documents saying, like, per Dr. Spar. And he's like, well, show me a document that has my declaration and my signature, and then I'll comment if I ever, like, like saw her. But it was, like, so clear that he saw her also – where do you think this documentary was going? Like, where you're gonna like it's about Britney Spears. Like, what do you what do you think they're gonna ask you, dude? Like, you probably should have just said no. I was surprised how many people from her inner circle were actually in the documentary. Yeah, and you can tell people five years ago probably never would have done this, but with the whole movement over the last three years, I think it started in 2019, the whole Free Britney thing. Yeah. It's been picking up steam. I think they finally realized they had an obligation to come out and speak up. Like the videographer, the MTV videographer, yeah. he seemed like a legit good guy. And, it, you know, his heart was in the right place. Yeah. The second documentary, which I'll touch on a little bit, the Hulu one, I mean, it was even cr the people they got. Like, I was blown, but that was the New York Times. So mm -hmm. they produced that one. So I'm actually, it wasn't just two freelance yes. documentaries. So they had a little more credibility. I people think. like this. By the way, where do you think the um, data dump came from? All the files that they were sent? They didn't say that because I don't think you can do, can you do Freedom of Information Act on like, dude, that I was don't a think lot you can. of, I don't think so. that I was a think lot so. of like behind yeah. the scenes shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, it was um it was an easy watch. Like it was it was hard yeah. to watch. It was like like I was never bored too, so right. I liked the doc. I, I would give it a a good grade, I think. Me too. Yeah. It was depressing as fuck. It was me. very depressing. Like, it was very I know depressing. it's hard for a lot of people to you know, that work their ass off and struggle to get by to feel bad for celebrities and, you know, wealthy people, but this is an extreme just moment. being like empathetic and human. I mean, you got to feel for this girl because she got big time. Well, you like you you want people to have basic human rights and dignity and freedom. And she didn't have any of that. And so she was just like a cash cow. But the hardest part for me was like on the outside. Uh, I didn't even know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no. there are celebrities who just choose not to do media anymore. Right. They And she was doing that residency. Like, everybody knew if you went to Vegas mm -hmm. at any point in time. Like, hey, you could see Britney. She's, I forgot what But, dude, I before. didn't realize the money she was making. I didn't that. know that no. either. I mean, you can go on a, a nationwide tour and make 40 grand a year, or you can have a four night a week Vegas residency and make 140. Yeah. I was like, holy fuck. That, that's a no brainer. Yeah. yeah. No brainer, but uh, what did you what did you think about um, th how the father went from you know d not being involved to totally involved to bringing in that chick from TriStar who I'm pretty sure he was banging, 
And then yeah. he's got this alcoholism problem, no job. He's just like the whole time. No I was job. Just, Guy had a fucking job. He's running an empire. <laughs> I mean, paying himself 16 grand a month, which I mean, that's just. What he liked to fish. On. He was just trying to make some, you know, yeah. some money on the tackle. Just such a scumbag. Such a scumbag. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, he he really he really was. And, and they said anytime she stepped out of line, and I mean, they the, like the Hulu doc, they were talking about hit her assistant. Mm -hmm. I think her name was Hillary, and they didn't really talk about her at all in the Netflix doc. They said that she was the one that wielded all the power, and hmm. that the personal stylist who was like Brit the shoulder Britney cried on all the time would be like, you know, stand up for her. She'd be like, Britney wants sushi tonight. And she'd be like, no, she had sushi last night and it's too expensive. Like tell her to get something else. It's like Britney Spears, it's too expensive for Britney Spears. Like get her the girl with the fuck she wants. And her, and she would throw a tantrum and be no like, tab that up, man. she'd be like, I want fucking sushi. And the father, the first thing he would say when she got out of line is, do you want to see your kids this week? That, yes. Like that is he's a fucking scumbag. Yeah, and that dude. was the, that's the ultimate. They said that too. That's the ultimate yeah. carrot is like right. the kids was like she was held hostage because she wanted to see her kids, her kids. But, well, um, it, they also made it seem like the kids were what finally like started the breaking point of this like his seal around her, where they were visiting and he like broke a door down yeah. and then Kevin Federline had to get get a restraining order against the father for the children. So then it then it seemed like that was something that started to make his whole like lockdown conservatorship empire start to crumble because now that like okay well we should really be looking how into about this the guy. slime how about his slime ball attorney too when they brought that up to him I was shocked he answered it and he just backpedaled the whole time uh to my knowledge I think a, a door was slammed yeah. a little hard and right. it might have came off the hinges <laughs> yeah it accidentally came off the hinges okay. Hey, let's take a quick break here to talk about dude wipes. Dante, you're going to be running that marathon this weekend. You're going to need some dude wipes, bro. That's actually a great idea. Yes. And uh, they come in those nice little travel packs. I can squeeze it right in my zipper. Mm -hmm. Exactly. My shorts. Good call. You like, guys, you got some I can Oh, grab? yeah. We yeah, got we some got in the pop. office. We got some. Perfect. Some, some dude showers and go right to the bar after. Just wipe it down. That's perfect. He, you're going to wear your metal to the bar? Absolutely not. <laughs> I do have a I do have a sick jacket though. Okay, so I, I I'm gonna wear that. I'm not gonna wear my. I could though. picture you walking in the bar with a medal around your neck and those little tinfoil blankets and. Just <laughs> <laughs> I do want I do want the tinfoil blanket when yeah. I cross the line. Yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted to know if those actually do anything. Yeah, but so, I just want to test it. <laughs> so Dante is gonna have his dude showers. You should have yours. Go to dudewipes.com. Use code BC15 for fifteen percent off. Your entire order, get the showers, get the wipes, get the powder, get everything. They got oh, a they have bunch powder of too? Oh, yeah. Like oh, I need Good that. powder too. It's, yep. it's one of the number one things like my buddies hit me up for. Oh, dude. It's a dude wipe. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I don't work for dude wipes, but I always try to, you know, give them a bottle. Yeah. But uh, Spread the wealth. Yes. Great yeah. for exactly. anti-chafing. Yep. Yes. And, which we've covered. Yeah. Get that too. <laughs> That's yeah. what I need for and my yeah. and my socks. Yep. Once again, dudewipes.com, use BC15 for 15% off your entire order, or they're on Amazon, Walmart, Target Nationwide. Go check them out. All right, let's get back into the episode. The Hulu one also, they somehow got the head of her private security details, personal assistant who was on every call, CC'd on every email. This guy knew everything about everything that went on around her security detail, and this guy just fucking spilled his guts and said they were pretty much <laughs> they were pretty much paid not so much to protect her from nefarious people or mm -hmm. like psychos but to watch over her keep her in check watch her every move they're the KGB basically keep yeah. her like locked in the house if she wanted to go somewhere, they, she'd have to ask like an hour in advance and then it would have to be run up the ladder and okayed. If she wanted money, she'd have to ask days in advance. They, they uh, gave her her medication every day. And the guy was like, one of the, the guy said one of our new security people was like, 
is it really our job to be giving her? They said that they had little Ziploc bags every mm -hmm. day with like the date on it and they would go give her the medication. And one of the new guys was like, is it really our job to be giving her medication? And the boss said, it's the, the client, it's the client's request. And the interview goes, well, who's the client? And he goes, Jamie Spears. Yeah. So, well, that was like another thing that the conservatorship was like, holy fuck, was that Britney Spears or whoever the conservatee is, has no rights to their own healthcare, you know, like person. No, they said person. Yeah. But like, like the doctors don't have to like tell her what she's taking. They don't have to do anything. And so it's like, you know, she, she started to like, quote unquote, get out of line because uh, she didn't want to do one of the tours or maybe it was the Vegas thing. She's like, I, you know, I just don't want to do it. And they're like, okay, you don't have to do it. Then they came back the next day and she was off of the medication she'd been on for five years and now you're on lithium. And she said in her court thing, that, yeah. that interview they played from her testimony. Oh, they had me ready to run through a wall. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that great? Oh, yeah. yeah. She was like fucking, that was awesome by her. But yeah. doesn't that hammer it home even more that she was there? Yeah. Like she wasn't definitely. as crazy as everyone thought? Now, now did they, and, and listen, it shouldn't have happened. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm pro the conservatorship here, but what what about the shaving thing, like the hair thing? They didn't well, really was, profile that. Yeah, like was she? Was there a little bit? They said in the net. They said in the Hulu one that it was a combination of obviously stress and her losing her kids. I mean, they said that. Remember, K Fed originally. Full How custody. fucked up is this? Yeah. How the fuck does K Fed get full custody? Well, I, I don't know. K Fed filed a restraining order against. Like Jamie, you know, maybe he was a little better than what was at the surface. Yeah, but right? she also said that he was just like he'd get up at five a.m. and get high. Yeah, you know, like he was just constantly high the whole time. But he still got it. But like that could have been a thing where you know Brittany was going through a hard time and going through this divorce, and then also had like the father. That's when the conservatorship started. So maybe she like wanted to fight for joint custody, and her father was telling her lawyers like, "Get rid of those kids. We need a tour." Yeah. You know, like, like I think anything is on the table with that. But I mean, that part was uh, from a musical perspective. This was really a great walk down memory lane because you forget. I mean, she put out some fucking bangers during and, this time where her life was completely upside down. Like that Blackout album, I totally forgot about that Circus album. Totally forgot about mm -hmm. back in those days. You fucking heard one of those songs. Girls lost their fucking mind. Yeah, like they still do today. You play. Oh, she's like, an entertainer. Oh, big time. But, you know what I mean? Like but, that's her perform. Like the way she performed, she was like seriously dude, a full package. It wasn't the, just a fucking good song. Hundred percent. Yep. But the the fact that she was going through this in her personal life and still able to to make the the song she was making and tour and perform them live, it's fucking incredible. I mean, not to compare apples and oranges, but if you look at Eminem's period where his life was completely in shambles and he was on fucking drugs, I mean, he put out the worst music ever. Mm -hmm. And that was like the worst point of his career. So it's not like everybody can fucking do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that was one of the things from, from the thing at the end. She's like, I'm not good at what I do. I'm great at what I yeah. do. And it was like, oh, fuck. Like, let's go. It was Let's awesome. go, Brittany. So, so the Netflix one ended on that, which was a great ending. The Hulu one started on that, which, and it kind of... So they went backwards, sort of? No, they didn't. So the Netflix one, you know how it showed her coming up and yeah. the backstory, the Hulu one. If Honestly, you should watch it. It's not that long. I, I think I probably will because I thought this one was so good. And it starts from basically where the Free Britney movement started, and it dives into just how fucked up the people Jamie put in place were from TriStar, which that whole fucking thing, dude, the money those leeches made yep. off this and her assistant the security just everything i mean they, they he was sucking he was sucking blood from her every which way he could yeah i i guess it's just I, my takeaway is it should be a lot harder to get into a conservatorship and a lot easier to get out like so, there should be like I, I like if I'm a resident of California and I don't know if this is the thing no, everywhere that no, that's the, and I looked this up because I was so I was so confused afterwards because, you know, I, I did the law school thing for a little while. And I one of my first jobs in a law firm was dealing with ombudsmen who step yeah. in for 
senior citizens that are like in nursing homes and stuff like that. And families, the power of attorney thing is a huge deal yeah. when, mm -hmm. you know, people turn elderly and can't take care of themselves. Usually they'll grant power of attorney to a family member. So this whole thing, I'm like, this sounds like power of attorney, but on steroids. And that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's a California thing. And if you're not from California, you're not very familiar with it. So I think we kept hearing the word conservator this whole time over the years and no one knows what the fuck it means. Yeah. But it, it I think, you know, there, there is a difference with power of attorney and maybe conservatorship where they were talking to like the geriatric psychiatrist. Well, yeah, if you have like a grandma or somebody who like that's that's like a thing that's been happening a lot in this day and age is that the elderly are targeted for these like online and like phone scams, right? So if they if they had made a lot of money in their time or even if they're on like a fixed income where you might need like another layer to protect them from themselves because they don't really understand what's going on it's because health, they're it's 85 years too. old. You know, yeah. it's health stuff too. Of course, if, right. You know, you go into a coma, who's going to decide? Right. You know, exactly. It's and, it's everything. Yeah, and it's like, okay, like, you know, Nana, she needs to move into a place where she has more care. And so her house is sitting there. Well, you know, the power of attorney might want to sell the house and the power of attorney, usually a relative, sell the house to then put those funds towards the cost of needing like an intensive round the care, like nursing home type situation. Yeah, which you have to liquidate everything if you go into, right. you know, Medicaid. So like in that instance, it makes sucks. sense. Or if someone has, you know, if it's a, if it's a, an adult, okay who's, you know, in their 20s, uh, over 18, but it has like severe, you know, Down syndrome or something like that, where they where they're still living with their parents and they, you know, they they get some sort of social assistance, but they don't really know how to, you right. know, do like all that makes sense. But like how you could have a person like Britney Spears, <laughs> who is clearly high functioning and might have just been going through a temporary mental break because of how she was brought up and the amount of stress and the fear of losing her children and, and all this. Then she gets locked into the system for 13 fucking years and can't get out like that is there. There needs to be like so, a different level. of. So guidance. here's the difference that I came to I, the conclusion I came to. And this, I started getting like severe law firm flashbacks and I had to bail out. But <laughs> the different the main difference is with power of attorney, you personally sign off on it. You grant it to somebody, unless you're incapacitated, mm -hmm. which that's a whole different route you have to go. But it would be me saying, I trust you as okay, right. my power of attorney making decisions. Obviously that did not happen here. Right. And it's the, the, one of the easiest definitions is the difference between conservatorship from power of attorney is knowing when a person is considered incapacitated is vital when it comes to understanding the difference between power of attorney versus conservatorship in California. Since the power of attorney takes place while a person is in capacity to make decisions and conservatorship once the person loses that capacity. So again, to your point, she was, th I mean, she was a, a multi, multi-million dollar business. You're right. Very well functioning, well-oiled machine. She had a, a slip up mentally that I think was exacerbated through the media mm -hmm. and everything. And these people pounced on it and absolutely took advantage and exploited her. And then yeah. it got drawn out over a decade. So yeah. fucked up. I, yeah. She's she's out of it now, though, right? So it's that's a good thing. No, it's but have you seen what she's been doing now? Now it's like, fuck. No, I, I just know that, that he denounced conservatorship and then it had to go in front of a judge. And I believe on the 30th, they overruled it. So I think she's, she's free. Yeah. Yeah. But, but she's going nuts on social media. Like she? she's posting nudes on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. Which, I mean, lots of people post things on Instagram, but it's also like, I still think like, you know, I even still think, but like she is a an adult human being who has the right, You're right to post whatever she wants. And if it looks a little, mm, I wouldn't do that if I were her, I'm not her. You're and right. She should still have the ability to post whatever and say whatever and do whatever. Um, you can tell it's definitely, but it, yeah, it's but it, definitely 
something she was forbidden from doing that she's now flexing you know like oh well, it's almost like you know if you grew up in like a strict catholic house growing up and you go to college and go a little nuts yeah. okay yeah i kind of think she's having a similar type of experience at age 40 yep you know so i i it's you know it's hard to I, I, I kind of I understand what you're saying because you, you watch like some of her public behavior and it just man, it's like, man, you're still kind of like worried about her. Like you, in a way that it's like you don't think she's out of the woods mentally and, and, and all that. But but that's why watching that doc really made me empathize with her because you you put yourself in that person's shoes and you, and you realize like they never had a real childhood. Yep. They never had real friends like this. The woman that went and visited her in her dressing room in Vegas, uh, one of her backup dancers from when she was like first coming up yeah. that she hadn't seen in years. I mean, she like bawled her eyes out and wept. She was so happy to see her. And the lady left and she was like, her security guard came up to me and was like, I don't know who you are, but can you please come around more often? Like she doesn't have anyone that she gets emotional like that in her life. Yeah, It's the saddest thing. And it's like she she was surrounded by all these people, but she was so lonely at the same time. And it's like that sucks, man. What, what did you make of all the different people, all the guys? So, so it's like, yeah, like Kevin Federline, backup dancer, husband. Then it was. I, I don't know. I, that, that was tough, too. Yeah. It's, it's like, like some all these guys are manager and now they're dating. And, yeah. now, and like then he gets pushed aside. Then it's another guy who's. In there a was sim- a lot. It was hard to follow. Yeah. And dude, the fucking paparazzi guy. I totally forgot about that guy. Yeah, that guy. How the fuck did he luck into that? I don't know. I don't know. But it's like he pumped her gas and then he's fucking dating like the biggest pop star in the world. But that was like a common theme. Like then it's like he like the other guy was at Liftco. Lift Lifto. Yeah. Yeah, Lifto or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Where it's like, yeah, I met her in a bar and then got her number and she called me and I he and then like she and like a court document described him as a friend sometimes they banging and and then he was like around and he was being photographed and then like his story where he drives her home and there's two squad cars four security guards and her dad and they're like well he he kidnapped you because so i didn't give you permission to go out like so mm-hmm. she's like this is after she's been like she's divorced a mother of two children megastar if she leaves the house without permission, the the father can call the police and say she's been kidnapped, and they have to treat it as a legitimate kidnapping, even yeah. though she's just out on her own free will and coming back. And then that was like the end of the thing. And then they also said that he was putting drugs in her food, and it's like, so it's like, yeah, I got like shady vibes from that guy. But then he made a good point where he's like, look it, there's a reason why the police never came to my door for drugging her. It's because she was getting drug tested every single day. If I was drugging her, I would have been arrested. They people would have known about it. I wasn't doing that. That was just a way to like drop things in the media to get me out of the picture. And so it was like, holy fuck! Like, how deep are these people willing to go to like just control every single facet of her life, and including like conversations that she has? Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, she's all right mentally, and she's. I hope so too. You know, I hope so too. Because she's. Because she's basically, there's nothing, there's no more restrictions there, right? That's my understanding, but. Unless if there's something we're not knowing, right? Right, but how could we? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. It's just like you never know what's going on in people's. Wild. Yeah. Mega star. The, just, probably the, would you say she's the biggest star of our lifetime? One of them, dude. Has to be, right? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think of my, like, middle school. She was, like, a very important girl from I mean, she. School. Yeah somehow managed to be a giant sex symbol for guys and every girl's like favorite yeah. you know, singer which is very, very i mean her weird. music is good too awesome like she is those good, songs she, come on you like Ooh. yes oh yeah. yeah great music as well i love that it's transitioned like it's made its way into like the normal weddings now yeah like it's when those songs come out of weddings everybody's on the dance floor it's probably like it's like our equivalent of like jackson five yeah, from like 20 years good, ago man. so i mean and you know the next album could be could could be a big one too yeah well we'll see yeah we'll see so what's going on you're you're you're, you're leaving this weekend boston again 
What are you doing? Marathon. Are you excited? Uh, What's the training been like? I'm a little nervous. Um, been running every day. Have you done one before? Yeah, I did last year, but it was virtual, so it doesn't really count. That's why I'm doing this year. <laughs> like, oh. how, how, so how did it? You it did was it on a treadmill? Awful, dude. <laughs> no, I ran from Navy Pier to Northwestern and back, which is like exactly 13 miles. Okay. But you're doing it by yourself. You have an app tracking you, and it was fucking miserable. It would have been funny if you had to do it like on a treadmill with VR. It's like here's Heartbreak Hill. That would suck even more. <laughs> How was that run? Uh, it it was awful. I did it in I think early September, and why do you are you just doing this for like, no? A I, I do it for Gronk's charity. Yeah, I raised a ton of money last year, so they asked me if I wanted to do it again this year and do the actual race, which I not a lot of people get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. so, It'll be cool for you. Yeah, it's a good opportunity. There. You can say I did it, raise a ton more money. Um. If you're listening and want to donate, there's a link on my social media. We built uh, a really nice playground for kids in Boston last year from all the money we raised right on the banks of the Charles River. So, That's sick. Yeah, it nice. goes to a good cause. Yeah, go donate. Where's that again? It's on my social. It's pinned okay. top of my Twitter. Yeah, go look at Dante. What's your handle? Dante the Don. Go check that out. Well, good luck. Thanks, man. I thought it was always... Uh, Boston Marathon's like the it's at Patriots, Patriots Day, Day yeah. in April, but yeah. they delayed it because of COVID. Ah. So what sucks is Chicago Sunday, and then Boston's Monday. So you couldn't run both. If no, you were, which yeah. I, which Dave fucking squeezed, squirmed out of because we were supposed to run Chicago together, and then when I told him I can't run Chicago, he said, "Oh, if you're not going to train with me, then fuck it." And I was like, "I'm still training for Boston. Like, I'm not running by myself." <laughs> He's such a. So he squirmed out. So next year, I'm going to have to run Chicago and get his ass to it because we were running for mm -hmm. Weish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wish Fest. Wish yeah. Fest yeah. 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 I, uh, I ran the off. I, I don't know. It's, it's I ran the Austin spelled half marathon. W E I S H. So. Do you know that? That I ran the Austin half marathon? In Austin? Yeah. That's impressive. It's fucking hot. He's I know. Lying. Look it up. He lied. Nice. nice. Look it up. It's on the internet. <laughs> um well damn yeah good luck what do you guys got this weekend what do you what's your what are you gonna do on sunday i'm kind of mad i'm not gonna be here now well, justin fields was just named the starter so we'll be watching justin fields well now that i know that it's the chicago marathon i'm not going anywhere east oh Ugh. yeah that's good. the worst that is bad that's the worst it's over early though no it's not not really well it's over by like what one yeah, Two? that's early. I was dating yeah. a girl who ran it, I think, in must have been 19. And so, like, I had to be like, oh, I'll see you at the 15 mile mark, <laughs> and I'll bring the dog, and I'll, you know, and I'll get over to the. Uh, Where is that, by the way? The 15 mile mark. Yeah. It was, it's like that Wait, stretch. What neighborhood? Of, it was over by, like, the West Loop United Center. Oh, that's. Like, they run right by the United Center for part of it. And so, like, I was, you know, running down, like, Wood Street from over in my neighborhood. You know, like, you know, then you miss it, and then you hear about it from midnight. I was, I was there. I fucking swear to God, I was there. I ran over with the dog. I think supporting people run the marathon is harder than running it. <laughs> I would say. I think it's harder. To, you, know, you got to be at the start. You got to be at the some couple midway points, and you got to be at the finish. And I get it though. That probably fires them up. You know, they're so deep on this run, and then they see someone. It's like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I understand this. The support it is motivational is, is needed for sure. Uh, yeah. Not Boston supporting people is not hard at all. I mean, we fucking. I went a few years ago. My buddy ran it, and I was so pissed. It was the only time I'd ever been because it was like the funnest day ever. The Red Sox play at like eleven a.m. I think it's earlier than that. Super early, and then the bars are fucking packed. So it's it's Patriots Day, so it's a holiday out there. So no one has to work, and the bars are slammed. It, it's like a it's like a party it's a real party yeah we it's always blast. on a monday right yeah, yeah. that's nice yeah, yeah we had a blast i went once i heard chinatown that's where i went to my you know gave mm -hmm. my buddy a high five go, go, well, keep he, going he was, i saw darren <laughs> Ravel too so that was a, yeah. that was an added bonus running or hanging out running 
Really? I picture him yeah, like when not there and he's blowing me kisses. He's a runner. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, he's running yeah. before. It used to be like a part of like his profile thing. I remember like White Sox Dave used to talk shit to him about it too. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I he's pictured, in a bloody nipple hall of fame. I was huh? just gonna say he he has big time Andy Bernard vibes where he's got a <laughs> scotch tape cotton ball to his nips. I don't think he does, but that, yes, he but does. It, but vibes, yes. I don't think it actually happens, but. It actually happens. Does it? I think he probably puts uh, one of those big band aids over his nipples. Yeah. It was Are you huge, doing that? Dude, credit the there. Huge regret of mine last year. Yep. My shit was all oh, fucking. Yeah, bloody nipples. You're huh? blooded up? Hurt so bad. You know, chief. Yeah, so I got the little uh, nipple Tassels? protectors for there this year. Go. Heavenly bodies? I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> yeah, the chicken cutlets. <laughs> Is that where you went? Heavenly bodies. Could get him across the street, probably. That's those slow yeah. Yeah. Those commercials all the time. Heavenly bodies? Already? Yeah, that's not far from me. It's not. Is it still open? Yeah, but when in like our early twenties, we'd like fuck around, be like, let's go get a bottle of bodies because it was so cheap. Like it was literally, you know, you go for the bottle, not even for anything yeah. else. But it was like, well, that was the same thing at like VIPs or by uh, yeah, the, but, like yeah. the booze was so cheap, right? So it's like yeah, and like, it was just is, open late. Like I, I have, I've had sense. a couple weird nights. It, it's like that VIPs, no one even looks at the girls. At the, at yeah. the one, where's that? Was that the one by Joe's? Yeah, it was right over by Joe's. Well, I'm sure people do. I, I love that place. Is it gone? Yeah, yeah it's something I, else. It's now. Rick's Cabaret now, which uh, I also think is shut which down. Which is a national chain. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Good luck. Go check that out. Go donate. Great and, doc uh, for next week. Yeah. What, what is it again? Should we, should we disclose yeah, it? Yeah, why or? not? Why not? The Curse of Chippendales. I'm redeeming myself with this one. Have you watched it already? I watched the trailer. Okay. So, you, I mean, <laughs> you're calling your shot that you've redeemed yes. yourself. Yes. Yeah. Just, I'm basing it just on the graphics that Danny's going to be able to design alone for this. <laughs> yeah. The preview. It's going to be awesome. Hmm. All right, then. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you, guys. That's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow.